So welcome back, and in today's video, we're taking a look at some of my favorite accessories for my M4 Pro Mac Mini. Now these items can be used with other products, whether it be a MacBook, an iPad, an iPhone, a base model M4 Mac Mini, so on. But what I predominantly use them on is my M4 Pro Mac Mini. Now, some of these items you may have seen, some of them you may not have seen, but what we know for sure is it's gonna be a good video. And before we get into the video, if it's your first time here, my name's Almir, AKA Mr. H Tech. If I do earn your subscription somewhere in the video, remember to hit that subscribe button below. It really does help, and we're so close to getting to that 20K subscribers. And if you do end up liking the video, also hit that like button below. It's also down there somewhere. Share it with your friends and family who also might be interested in tech content. Leave a comment down below before you get into the actual video what your favorite accessory is, whether it be for your iPhone, your MacBook, your M4 Mac Mini, and then we can compare later and see how many people have the same kind of favorite accessory. Starting things off with your monitor. There is a bunch of different routes you can take. You can go 1080p, 2K, 4K. I previously used a 4K 43 inch monitor or TV as my monitor and that worked perfectly fine. You get that crisply clear 4K image and then transition to what might have been my most popular orientation for monitors, which was the two U-Perfect 22 inch 2K displays in a stacked orientation, one on top of the other. I had a lot of people asking in the comments, what monitors are those? How did you get them like that? Because they liked it and it did look pretty cool to be honest. I've moved over to the ultra wide monitor. It's my first ultra wide monitor and I may make a dedicated video on it later on. It's by Innocent, it's the 40 C1R model. I really like how you get that extra real estate on the screen, especially when I'm editing videos, I get to see more of that timeline. And even when I'm opening multiple different apps, I've got so much space on the screen to just position them wherever I want and do more things at once. Now, if you want, as they say, the creme de la creme of monitors for Macs, I would have to say probably it is gonna be the Apple Studio display. Now, it is pricey, I think it's like $1,600, $1,700, but that is probably one of the better displays for a Mac, obviously made by Apple. I believe it's a 5K display. Currently, it is on offer, so if you check the link below, you will see that it's currently, I think, $300 off. So now is probably the best time to get one if you do plan to get an Apple Studio display. So when it comes to keyboards, you have a lot of options out there. You can go full mechanical keyboard like the Lumen Key 75. Now, as you can see, this is heavy. It's got a metal base. It's not overly expensive either, but it gives you that nice mechanical keyboard sound and feeling that a lot of people like. You can also go the custom mechanical keyboard route. So this is the Monsgeek M1 V5. However, it does have custom keycaps, as you can see. And it also has custom switches in there that I've put to make it very silent, unlike the Lumen Key one, as you can listen now. So much more silent, and I really did prefer this when I was using it. And then if you want to go very low profile, you can get something like the Apple Magic keyboard, which kind of imitates a laptop keyboard very similar to the MX Keys keyboard that you can get by Logitech. Very slim, like I said, looks like a laptop keyboard. So if you like the feeling of a laptop keyboard, this might be the one for you to get. And with the Apple Magic one, you can get the newer version with the Touch ID in the top corner. So if you want to unlock your Mac Mini very easily and you've got a password, you can just tap that Touch ID, it makes it very convenient. And then something in between the full mechanical and the super slim, you can get these slim mechanical keyboards. This is the one by Satoshi, it's the SM1. This is what I've been using currently for the longest period of time. Slim keyboard, has them mechanical switches, so it feels very nice when you're typing. It's not that heavy because it's not fully made of metal, but does have a nice quality to it. What I will be moving after this Satoshi very soon to the new setup is the Keychron K2HE, which I think just looks really nice. The only thing I may change is these wood sides. I may paint them black to fit with the theme of the desk setup, but otherwise I really like the look of this keyboard and I think it's gonna look really nice in the setup. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss this in the setup coming soon. But yeah, all of these keyboards can be connected to the M4 Mac Mini and it's all about preference, what kind of keyboard you like and to have the best experience. So when it comes to mice, there is obviously a lot of different options out there. Also, just like the keyboards, you can go for a gaming mouse, slim mouse, low profile, ergonomic, etc., etc. My hands down best mouse I've ever used has to be the Logitech MX Master 3S. Now, before this, I used the 2S and it was equally as good. The 3S came with some improvements like the silent click, which is perfect because something I've 
appreciated after using these M-Spec Macs and MacBooks is silent environment. The fans are hardly heard and it's just very peaceful, so why not couple it up with silent accessories? Now this is perfect, it's got an ergonomic feeling when you hold it, customizable buttons, very good build quality. You can tell that the scroll wheels are very well built and like I said, best mouse I've ever used. Currently you can get it, I believe, around $85, $100. There is, it goes on offers very frequently. Now I was gonna say, if that is kind of out of your budget, you can go for something a little bit cheaper. I think it goes for around $75. It's the Keychron M6 mouse. As you can see, it looks very similar to the Logitech. However, I will say, you will definitely notice the difference in build quality because this one, a majority of it is made straight from plastic. You don't get the added scroll wheel benefits. It's not silent when it comes to clicks, but it is ergonomic. You do get the scroll wheels and the customizable buttons. So it does have that, but I would highly suggest pay the extra 10, 15, 20 dollars, get yourself the MX Master. If you're thinking of getting one of these, you will definitely appreciate it. Now, for those of you out there that do like the Apple Magic Mouse, I did make a video on this and I did try it for two weeks. This is also a solid option if you like the gesture controls. For my two weeks that I used it, I did like the controls on it. However, I do not like the ergonomic feeling. It just, I just can't get used to this, especially when I'm holding it. It's just not comfortable at all for me. Now there is people out there that do love it. So if you do like it, I think it's around $75, $80. I love a nice addition, as well as all the other alternatives I'll link down below. So a lot of options out there. Pick something that's comfortable for you because you're gonna be using it for a while. It's something like the Carpio 2.0 from Delta Hub. There is different iterations of this kind of thing, but generally it sits under your wrist when you're using it and it alleviates some of that wrist pain and gives you support when you'll have them long sessions with the editing or gaming. Very underrated product and I would highly recommend getting one of these as well. So something a lot of people forget that it's not a MacBook Pro and you won't have a webcam built in is a webcam. Now this one is the Obspot Me 2 and I have to say this has to be the smallest 4K webcam I've ever used but don't let the size fool you because even having that small size it packs a punch when it comes to specs and performance. On the front we've got a half inch CMOS sensor with f1.8 aperture so it's very good in low light which is great because when you're at home and them home situations you don't always want to have the light on and you might be in minimal lighting conditions so knowing that you can still get a very good picture even with not having the lights on full blast with the great low addition. Now it does record 4k at 30 fps and 1080p at 60 fps if you're someone that's paranoid about having a camera staring at you just like that even though the indicator light is not on, you might be worried that it's recording something or someone's hacked into it. Well, Obsbot give you this mini magnetic cover which clips on the front, and now you can be sure that nobody is recording what you're doing, no matter what it is that you're doing. Now it is equipped with phase detection autofocus, and I've experienced the autofocus has been very good, gives you a nice crystal clear image, and nine out of 10 times it focuses in exactly the point where you want it to, and it also has built-in dual omnidirectional microphones with noise reduction, which is another thing you don't get on the M4 Mac Mini, which is a microphone. So if you have this plugged in and you wanna make a voice call using your M4 Mac Mini, you can use the microphones on the Obspot and you're good to go. And having this complete package at $120, $130 is a lifesaver. Now, when it comes to putting it up on the stand, what you can do is it has tripod thread at the bottom, so you can mount it to a tripod USB-C connection on the back to connect to your M4 Mac Mini, or you can use the stand that comes with it. Now this is for a monitor, so you can see the lip there attaches to the top of your monitor. The top is magnetic, so you don't have to worry about your webcam falling off. And your webcam sits on there, you can adjust the angles if you want, and you get that perfect angle. You know, you can have it landscape or move it vertically to get it to portrait mode, depending on which orientation you want. And then combine that with the AI auto framing, you can either have it zoom in and have your face centered if you choose the close-up mode, or if you choose the upper body mode, it's gonna keep your upper body in the middle of the frame. Now combine that with the gesture of showing your hand with the L sign, and that will initiate either a zoom in or a zoom out without you actually having to go into the settings and clicking any buttons, which is quite convenient. So external storage has been a very popular discussion with the new M4 Mac Mini and the M4 Pro Mac Mini. And a lot more people are moving over to getting an external NVMe, whether it be a Thunderbolt 4 or a Thunderbolt 5 external NVMe enclosure and putting their own NVMe inside 
because it does give you a few more benefits and of course it saves you a ton of money so for example if your machine was to break down or go for a warranty you know that you've already put your important files on your nvme and you don't have to worry about anything getting deleted from there also if you want to use your files with any other machines having it on the external nvme gives you that access to just plug in a cable whether you want to plug it into your iphone your ipad wherever it may be and you know you can use them files and you don't have to think about how i'm going to start transferring over to be able to do that now the big reason people are moving over i think is price because upgrading to for example i think it's four terabytes is somewhere around 1200 dollars and that is a lot of money whereas you can get yourself for example a thunderbolt 4 nvme enclosure for under 100 dollars get yourself a four terabyte drive for around 150 or 200 and for around 300 dollars you've got a four terabyte external that you can use bear in mind it is thunderbolt 4 but it will still give you around 3000 to 4000 megabits per second speeds which is more than fast enough if you want that extra speed extra power for some reason you need that more you can get yourself a thunderbolt 5 enclosure now these enclosures range from around 250 to 300 dollars and then of course the nvme also is around 200 dollars for that four terabyte which brings it up to around 500 550 dollars for the complete package but then you're getting them thunderbolt 5 speeds which at times can be even faster than your internal memory on the M4 Mac Mini, depending of course what NVMe you put inside. Now, even at $550, that's still saving you a ton of money instead of upgrading internally on the M4 Mac Mini. Now, you can also get the combined package of a NVMe enclosure with a hub. So you've got SD card, micro SD card, USB-C port, some A ports, and the Ethernet port. And then also, uncovering this, you can put your NVMe drive in there and have that extra storage as well so if you want the extra ports and the storage in one package you can also do that now other ones are like the Orico Mini Mate so this is made to imitate the Mac Mini it sits on top of your Mac Mini it's got a built-in NVMe SSD with the Thunderbolt 4 speeds so you're going to get around them 3000 to 4000 megabit speeds and you just connect it put it on top of your Mac Mini I've made a video about this also it does have a fan in there that is a little bit loud for me but some people don't mind it. But simply connect it to your Mac Mini, put it on top, and you're good to go. It will blend in, it will look like one machine. And then lastly, the other option you have these super small NVMe enclosures. This one is by Satoshi, it's been quite popular. Now this one is a 10 gigabyte connection, so you won't get them super fast speeds. You'll probably get around 900 megabits to 1000 megabit speeds, but it's still good for having as a backup or transferring between devices, or even, connecting to your iPhone if you want to record that raw video footage and then transferring over to your machine. Simply get the NVMe 2230 size, put it in there and then put the lid on and you're good to go. You can start transferring data from different devices very easily using the USB-C port on there and it's a nice little addition. Also made a video about this so that will be a link down below as well. Now a product a lot of people forget when they talk about accessories is a good quality cable, especially with these M4 Mac Minis and the M4 Pro Mac Minis. You're going to be connecting a lot of different stuff to it and having one good quality cable makes everything so much easier. Now the cable I recently looked at was the Adonis cable by Aohi. It's a Thunderbolt 5 compatible cable that gives you that full 80 gigabytes of compatibility when it comes to speed and data transfer. And not only that, it gives you charging capabilities up to 240 watts, obviously with a compatible power brick you can connect displays up to 8k using it and it's compatible with using on your vr equipment and all of this for i think right now it's around 39 dollars which is expensive for a cable but when you're looking at these new thunderbolt 5 cables with this new technology even apple's one is around 69 dollars and it's nowhere near as good quality as this aohi one that i've experienced now this is the mac forge by zero and it's essentially a shell made to make your M4 Mac Mini look like a Mac Pro. Looks very good. Build quality is very good. You might have seen a lot of 3D printed ones like this made from plastic, of course. This one is fully metal and the design is very nice. Has some features which I do like. Now, of course, having your MacBook vertically will mean this section is open before the airflow so that it might improve temperatures. You also, some people might say that this improves their Wi-Fi speeds because having it flat down, some people have said that their Wi-Fi speeds have suffered, so that might be an improvement. You have easy access to the power button, so for those of you who turn off your Mac Mini frequently, 
that will be nice for you. And the top is where the magic happens. So the top actually comes off. And here is a secret compartment where you can put a, for example, the Thunderbolt 4 Acasis NVMe enclosure I've showed you in previously. You can pop that in there, connect the cable through the slot there, connect it to your Mac Mini, and closing this magnetic lid, now you've got a hidden section, you've got that extra storage built in, whether it be two terabytes, four terabytes, and it all looks like one unit. That is a very nice little addition, and I think a lot of people are gonna benefit from that, me especially. So yeah, this keep an eye out on the channel, this is coming very soon in its own video, and I can't wait to show you. So that was my top accessories for the M4 Pro Mac Mini, and if there was anything you did like, like I mentioned in the video, there will be links in the description box below, as well as any discount codes I was able to find you, because saving money is always a good thing. Now remember, if you did own your subscription, hit that subscribe button below. If you did like the video, hit the like button, share it with friends and family, and don't forget to comment what's your favorite accessory for, whether it be your MacBook, your Mac Mini, your iPhone, etc. and we can compare down below and see what everyone is using and what their favorite accessory is. So I will catch you on the next one. Thank you for watching and have a great day.